Hi, this is a 30 minute flow for those days when you may not have a full hour, but you still wanna feel like you've done something healthy and productive. The logo of the Phoenix is all about positive transformation. So I think about this. We wash our bodies, we wash our cars, we wash our homes, but we don't always cleanse and clean our brain and our mind. Those are two different things. So utilizing the breath as this powerful cleanser, incorporating the ujjayi breathing, heating yogic breath that we'll do for this practice to help fan the flames. Just like we fan embers to build a fire, we're fanning the flames internally, burning those embers to create internal heat to burn off the ash with the exhale, inviting this cleansing sensation to take place, creating more space for something better. So it's not always about purging, it's not always about letting go. Sometimes it's about just feeling fulfilled and letting things in that you want to feel. Instead of feeling depleted at the end of your practice, you'll feel fulfilled. So join me for a 30 minute flow. Starting with feet hip width apart, three internal locks, pulling in the pelvic floor, pulling in the abdominals, and gently clasping the back of the throat for a whisper sound on the exhale as if you're fogging a mirror. So we have these three internal locks taking place throughout our practice. Shoulders back and begin to breathe from the diaphragm up at the top of the throat and from the throat all the way down. Nice strong breathing. As you exhale, imagine threading your abdominal muscles together as if you're doing a sit-up without the movement. Starting to build that internal heat right from the beginning. And I don't normally demonstrate when I teach, so you're gonna hear me breathing pretty heavily as I'm talking to you while I'm practicing. So you'll hear that breath really strong. Imagine breathing up into the brain. The oxygen is cleansing through the brain. And as you exhale, imagine any tension in the mind or even your heart or your body somewhere releasing with the exhale. So we're cleansing through the brain, cleansing through the mind. My mat is turned to the side, so I'm gonna to turn to the side, starting sun salutations. Inhale, arms out, around and up, looking up towards the thumb. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat, step or hop back, and a proper chaturanga, I'm gonna shift forward, lower down just halfway. Elbows are always at 90 degrees. Otherwise, bring the hips, the hips down with the chest or the knees down to the mat. So we're all the way down. Then inhale, squeeze the glutes, press the chest forward. Exhale, back to downward dog. I'm gonna do that one more time for chaturanga if you want the hover. So inhale, press to plank, shift the weight forward so as I lower down, my elbows are at 90 degrees. That way I'm utilizing my chest muscles and my muscles in my back, not my shoulders. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back to downward dog. When we, it's harder to do it that way, but it's correct. So if we're utilizing our chest and our back muscles, then we will get stronger without shoulder pain. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step, walk, or hop up to meet the hands, lift halfway. Exhale, fold forward, tuck the chin. Inhale, reach arms out around and up. Exhale, press palms together, heart center, engaging the chest, shoulders, and the back, pressing between the palms. Round two, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands on the mat, step or hop back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back to downward dog. Pedal to the feet, maybe shift your heels from side to side. Pull the belly in. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step walk or hop up to meet the hands, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach arms out, around and up. Exhale, press palms together at heart center. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend the knees, press into the heels, twist to your left. Bring the left arm back, keeping the hips and knees forward. Inhale, lift the arm back up. Exhale, twist to your right. Inhale, lift up, lengthen the legs, squeeze the glutes, press the chest forward in order to create the flexion in the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step or hop back, lower down, all in the one exhale. Inhale, drop the hips down, lift up. Exhale, back to downward dog. 
Inhale, right foot steps between the hands. Arms lift up. Keep an elliptical fluid motion guided by the breath. Exhale, lower down. Step back to low push up. All in the one exhale. Inhale, lift up. Exhale back. Inhale, step left foot between the hands. Squeeze everything toward midline. Lift the up, let it rise. Exhale, lower down. All the way to a little push up. Inhale, lift up. Exhale back. Five breaths here. Pulling the abdominals in. It's more important to have lifted heels and even bent knees if your spine is long than it is to round your spine and get your heels down. So press back, lengthening through the spine. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step, walk or hop up to meet the hands, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, press palms together. Round two, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, sit back, twist to your left. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, right. Inhale, lift up, lengthen, squeeze the glutes, press the chest up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step block or hop back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, right foot between the hands. Hug everything towards midline as you rise up. Exhale, turn the palms forward. All the way down, low push up. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back. Inhale, left foot steps between the hands. Lift and rise up. Turn the palms forward. Exhale, lower down all the way. Low push up. Inhale, lift. Exhale, back. Five breaths. Step outside of the rectangle, so to speak. Adding some movement. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, step, walk, or hop up to meet the hands, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, press palms together. Next sequence, we're gonna start in a forward fold, so inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Just get in there with some style. <laughs> inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands down, step, walk, or hop back to downward dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, bring the knee to the chest, hold here. Three deep breaths, squeezing the glutes and the back knee. So we don't wanna be arched up, we want length. Pulling from the crown of the head to the back heel. Inhale, extend back up. Exhale, knee to or towards the right elbow. Great prep for an arm balance here. Nice, deep, burning breaths. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring the knee to the left, squeezing the obliques. Holding here, three deep breaths. Even weight distribution between both arms, not just shifting to the left. Inhale, extend. Exhale, foot between the hands. Swivel the back heel down, warrior one. Inhale, lift and rise up. Clasp the elbows behind the head and start to lift up. In any position where we're standing, the front leg is stability, the back leg's mobility. So I'm gonna get down lower by moving my back leg back rather than the front leg forward. I'm gonna lift up, find some space here, breathe into it. Opening up the space. Shift the weight forward, lengthen the arms, crown of the head, lines up with the back of the heel, lengthening down. Palms facing down, maybe even taking your hands back by your hips, pulling everything in, hold and lift. Nice deep breaths, let it fuel, let it burn. Nice heated breath. Plugging the shoulders back and down. Shift the weight to the front leg as you sweep up to warrior three. Holding here, shoulders roll back and down. Great place to hold on to something. I have a wall right here or anywhere you wanna go. Everything nice and tight. Spread the toes and the back foot. As you exhale, bend the standing leg, step the floating leg behind the standing leg. 
bend down, left peace fingers, grab the right big toe as you lift up, maybe hold on to your knee here, or extend the leg forward into a twist. As you exhale, bend both knees. I'm opening my right knee to the side and opening to a half moon. I have these strong bent knees and I can lift up. I'm holding onto this wall a little bit. I might bend the knee, feeling really strong here. Breathe. Great place for a block. As you exhale, with control, lower down, warrior two. Hands behind the back. Lift the shoulders open to the chest. I'm going to turn around so my back isn't facing you. An opening right here. Inhale, extend arms out. Exhale, reach forward. Lower down. Maybe take a hand to the mat. Lift the opposite arm up or overhead. Breathing into the top lung. Back leg is just as engaged as the front leg. If I were to knock my hand out from under you, you would still hold right here. Okay, our arm is just a little kickstand. It's not the majority of the weight. Working on a bind, turn the bottom thumb in, wrap underneath, take the top arm over, and then open it up so we're between two planes of glass. We don't wanna be hunched over. Just bend your knees a little bit more, and this takes time. It's also dependent on the length of your bones. Okay, this may or may not happen for you. That's fine, who cares? Just a place to go. Lift back up. Exhale, lower down, pivot towards the front leg. Back leg faces forward. Place your right hand down and twist towards the left. Plug in the right shoulder. So again, if I take my hand out from under you, you can still hold here, just like that. There's a bind option here as well. Crossing back, taking the right arm thumb down, bring it underneath and open it up. Nice deep breaths. Start to unwind, inhale, step back. Holding here in a plank. I call these salsa planks. I love them. <laughs> I'm gonna start a little bit wider in the feet. As I exhale, I'm gonna bring my right foot, pick it up and place it to the left of the mat. Exhale, take a breath, pick up the left foot. Exchange. Little corkscrew. Five, four, three, two, and lift up, back to plank. Exhale, lower down, halfway. Inhale, drop the hips, lift the chest. Exhale, back to downward dog. Bend the knees, press the chest closer to the thighs. See if you can lengthen your spine a little bit more. And then press back, finding more space, more length. But being gentle. Power is in being, is in being gentle, not pushing so hard to the point of injury or frustration. We'll get there. Left side. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, knee to the chest. Hold here, three breaths. Pulling everything in. Gripping the mat with your fingertips. Inhale, extend back up. Exhale, knee to the left. Great prep for an arm balance. We're holding here. Inhale, extend back. Exhale, knee to the right. Holding here, twisted obliques. Equal weight distribution between both arms. Inhale, extend. Exhale, foot between the hands. Swivel the back heel down. Inhale, lift and rise up. Grab onto the elbows. Open up the space. Few deep breaths. If this is tough in the shoulders, take it this way. It's a cactus. Not everyone's shoulders are built the same. Listen to your body. Inhale, shift the weight 
to the left foot as you lift and rise to warrior three. Holding here, rolling the shoulders back and down, lifting through the abdominals, beautiful. Keeping the embers burning, fan the flames, keep it heated. Now I'm gonna turn the other side, you stay there. I'm turning the other side because I'm eventually gonna face the back wall. And I don't wanna do that. Bend the knees, cross the back leg behind, take the right peace fingers, grab the left toe, lift up, and again, either hold the knee here in a twist, or peace fingers to the toe, extend the leg, and twist and hold right here. Three breaths. It's more important to have length in spine than a length in leg. So if I'm arching my back to try and get my legs straight, who cares, okay? Get your posture first and bend the knee. Less is more. <laughs> Let go, open the knee out to the left, opening up to ward, or excuse me, half moon. Holding right here, opening to the side. Great place for a block. Lift and lengthen. My gaze is down, that's where I feel most balanced. Maybe you take the gaze straight out or up towards your left hand. Engage and lengthen. Breathe. Focus. As we exhale with control, step back to warrior two and open right here. Shifting on the mat a little bit, holding right there. Take the hands behind, open through the space if that feels good in the shoulders. Inhale, extend. Exhale, reach forward. Take the right hand to the mat. Great place for a block or a stack of books. Left arm lifts up, maybe over, breathing into the left lung. Let the breath do the work. Let the breath find the expansion. Back legs just as engaged as the front. Right hand, turn thumb under. Bring it back. Left arm comes over. Let's bring it down. Open up the chest, beautiful. And again, if a bind's not there, you're the only one that cares. Maybe ask yourself, why do you care? Stay right there. <laughs> Maybe even right here. Go where you can go and feel great about it instead of going where you think you should be and feel frustrated. All right, unwind, lifting back up. I'm gonna cartwheel down, turn the back foot to face forward, shift the weight to the left hand and lift the right arm up, low twisted lunge. Plug the left shoulder in, even bend the elbow a bit so we're not utilizing all of our weight pushing into the shoulder. And the bind option here, wrap the arm behind, left arm comes down, and open it up. Inhale, unwind, take it down, shift back to plank, and salsa planks. Squeeze the glutes. Bring the knee in, cross the feet, exhale. Cross the foot and step, inhale, exhale as you twist. Keep the hips low. Great oblique work, five, Four, three, two, last one, step it back. Exhale, lower down halfway. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, back to downward dog. However you get there, pedal through your feet. Separate your feet really wide, mine are off the mat. Separate wide, shake your hips a bit. Nice, deep, fiery breaths. Walk your feet up to meet your hands. Grab your, piece, your toes with your peace fingers. Take a breath and lengthen. Exhale, pull it in. Tuck the chin. Inhale, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Shoulders back. Stay where you are, I'm gonna face you. Shifting weight to the right leg. 
standing on the right leg, bend the knee, crossing over into eagle. And if you're doing this uh, power flow, you're probably at the point where you can maybe take the foot behind the leg. Again, who cares if you can't, okay? Just something to try. So if your left leg is on top, your left arm goes underneath, okay? Palms together, lift the elbow slightly and take the hands just gently away from your head and notice that beautiful stretch that takes place in the upper back. Sink down in the hips and open wide, radiate breath from the heart center. One time in class, we did this and I told everybody to spread eagle. I learned real quick, <laughs> wrong term. <laughs> Holding right here. Breathing, radiating from the chest. Beautiful. Let it burn. Sink a little deeper. Yeah. Even take the hands behind. Clasp the hands. Open the chest. Keep breathing. Fuel your legs. Fuel your body with this cleansing, fueling breath. Inhale, unwrap. Lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step or hop back. Low push up. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, back to downward dog. Walk up to meet your hands. Slowly roll up. One break right at a time. Shift your weight to the left. Bend the knee, cross the right over wherever it's gonna go. Right arm goes underneath, so we have this opposing opposite balance happening. Lift the elbows, gently pull the hands away from the head, sink down and breathe. If you feel well balanced, maybe lift to the ball of your foot. Whew. Maybe lift your toes, maybe close your eyes and let your focus or internal dress teeth take over. Noticing where you need to engage, noticing how your body is working, when you're listening and you're noticing and you're paying attention without this extra added bonus of your sight feeding off of other senses to hold you here. Sink down a little lower and spread your wings. That's a better term, spread your wings. Radiate through heart center. Beautiful, sink down. Even take the hands back. Inhale, unwrap, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Beautiful. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. Go through your vinyasa. Let's end in child pose this time. Hooray, child pose, woo! <laughs> Walk your hands to the right, reach farther with the left arm, breathe into your left side. Walk your hands to the left, reach farther with the right arm, breathe into your right side. Walk forward, inhale, lift it up, back to downward dog. Just for a few breaths. Take it down to hands and knees. Extend the right leg out. Exhale, bring the foot to the outside of the hands. Turn the foot out to the side. Maybe come down to the forearms. Maybe a twist. Wherever you want to go. We have external rotation in the right hip rather than just compression with the knee forward. If that feels okay to you, that's great. Everyone's hips are built differently. I personally need to have my right hip externally rotated to feel tension in my hip. That's what I wanna feel, not pain, but just the stretch. Start to walk the foot over to the left hip. Power pigeon, I'm gonna take, tuck my toes underneath, lift the back knee up, slide back, clasp the hands behind, squeeze the glutes, lift up, and breathe radiating again from this heart center space. Exhale, release down.
So letting go of the strength of the breath, but keeping the length of the breath. So as you're lying there, I'm just gonna keep talking to you to relax your face, relax your jaw, relax your eyes, soften the jaw, soften the space behind the eyes, soften your hands and your feet. Envision your breath as this warm, heavy, healing balm, like a honey that's gliding through your body. Maybe you need to ease physical tension. Place the breath there. Maybe you need to, to ease emotional tension or, or mental tension. Place the breath there. Breathe into it. like to stay there longer, go ahead and push pause. That's the yin aspect of yoga, is holding a few minutes in these deep stretching positions to allow our fascia and our connective tissues to rehydrate. So if you'd like to stay longer, by all means, push pause and go ahead and do that. Close your eyes and take intuitive movement wherever your body needs to go without being told where to go, without watching me, and just let your body move where it needs to to release from this strain. beginning to cool some of the heat that we've created. And whenever you're ready, extend the left leg back. Exhale, place the foot to the outside of your left hand. Turn the leg out, external rotation of the left hip, and maybe twist towards your left knee or come down to the forearm. Lengthening the breath, letting it glide through wherever it needs to. I hope you have music on. Music's good. It's good for the soul. So is silence, but sometimes it's nicely motivated with a great playlist. Take your foot over to the right. Scoop the back toes underneath, lift the knees, slide back, power pigeon, clasp behind. Inhale, lift up, pull the femurs into the hip sockets by squeezing the glutes to aid in better rotation in the, in the femurs. So we can stretch a little bit deeper, take a breath, lift up. And when you're ready, start to release down. And notice if creating tension actually helps you create a greater release. Your body will tell you if you're pushing too hard. Push to the point of tension, never the point of pain. I think the years of no pain, no gain are over because there's been lots of surgeries from those of us that grew up in those days. <laughs> you don't run a marathon in a day, your body would break down. So we, little by little, build our bodies up to the point where we can keep going. So stretching especially, and strengthening is no different. We build up little by little to where Less can be more. Being gentle can actually create greater success without injury. And rest and settle yourself here. Envision the breath gliding down your arms, gliding down your legs, gliding into your face, the back of your skull. Let your entire body radiate this heat in order to cool off, releasing the embers, releasing the ash out of, the, out of your body with the exhale, leaving behind this beautifully cleansed space. If you want to stay here longer, by all means, please do so. Or start to lift up, take intuitive movement, letting your breath guide you where you want to go, where your body wants to go. If your body could speak, what would it say? If you could write something down, what would it be? I can guide you, but I can't feel what you're feeling. 
So go to where you feel you would feel the best release. Lifting up, come to a seated position. Extend both legs forward. I like to take my hands behind, fingers pointed back, that gets external rotation in the shoulders, and lifting up, exhale, press the chest down to the knees rather than the head. Everything's connected, so if I round my spine, I've just lost half the stretch in my hamstrings. When I lengthen my spine, my hamstrings have to compensate by pulling a little bit more. So, less is more. I'm not trying to get my head down, I'm trying to lengthen and get my chest down. And we've overstretched the upper back and we've tightened the chest in our day and age by doing this all the time, wherever we are. So we're strengthening, or we're lengthening the chest, strengthening the back by pressing the chest down. Then if you wanna reach forward, that's great because you've already established the length in the spine. Breathe down into your legs, let it siphon this healing breath into the tension. Inhale as you rise up. Exhale, lower down one vertebrae at a time. Bring your feet to the mat. And lifting into upward bow or half wheel, it's really difficult to lift your body up if your hands are above your head. Even practice against a wall, okay? In fact, I'll do that. If, my, if I'm on the floor right now and my hands are above my head, there's really no way I can lift my body up very well. So you want your hands under your shoulder blades, making a very acute angle in the elbows. Tuck the elbows in next to your head. Then when you lift, your wrists are underneath your shoulders, establishing this great base to lift your chest. So, come back. Hands go behind the shoulder blades, tucking in underneath the shoulders. Then lift the chest and lift back. Maybe even lift up to the toes. Breathe. Great option is right here. Maybe clasping the hands underneath. <sighs> Lifting arms up. Five more breaths wherever you choose to be. When you lower down, tuck your chin, please, so you don't run on the top of your head. <laughs> Exhale, roll down one vertebrae, one vertebrae at a time. Bring your knees in, give yourself a hug, tuck your chin. And I always say, mean it. When you give yourself a hug, mean it. Hug yourself, love yourself. You just did something awesome. Drop your knees to the right, turn your head to the left. Breathe into the tight space in the belly, into the twist. Let the breath do the work. Pressing against your internal organs, pressing against your muscles to create a deeper twist without you pushing farther. Nice deep breaths. And a little deeper twist in your back is simply by evening out your knees. So if my top knee is falling back, I'm letting my hip back. I'm going to bring my knee up on top of the other knee and then my shoulder might lift off the floor, but I can shorten the lever and take my hand to my shoulder to release some of the pressure in my shoulder and keep that established twist in the lumbar spine. Exhale, bring the knees back to the chest. Give yourself a hug and mean it. <laughs> Lower the knees to the other side. Turn your head to the right and bring your knees even. And again, if that's too much in my shoulder, I'm gonna shorten my lever, bringing my hand to my shoulder so I can focus on the stretch here and not too much going on. And also focus on the twist in the lumbar spine. Breathe down low. Exhale, bring it back around. One last hug. and release down into your Shavasana. Now lay there and close your eyes as I continue speaking to you. Quick tension release exercise. 
As you're lying on your back, flex your feet, squeeze your knees, squeeze your, squeeze your glutes, your thighs, your calves, your belly. Squeeze your shoulders back and down. Make fists with your hands to tighten your biceps. Press the tongue to the roof of your mouth, purse your lips, and squinch your eyes. Five deep breaths. Creating external tension by keeping the breath calm. We are practicing remaining calm in a stressful situation. You're telling your brain, yeah, I'm uncomfortable right now, but I'm okay. I can be calm through something uncomfortable. It's beautiful practice for anxiety and stress and just full release. After your fifth breath, as you exhale, relax from the top of the head down. Relax your, your forehead, your eyes, your jaw, your lips, your throat, your shoulders, chest, all the way down. Open your hands, relax your fingers, relax your belly, glutes, knees, and feet. Inhale, sweep a breath from the feet to the top of the head. Hold it for three counts, keep the throat open. So we're telling our brain we're not panicking, we're just filled with breath, and then release it out. Inhale again, nice sweeping breath from the feet to the top of the head. At the top of that breath, sip in one more time. And then. <sighs> Notice how much sweeter the release is when you've created the tension and made the choice to release it. You feel the tension first, own it, validate it, allow it to take place in order to release it and feel better. Releasing the ashes. Now bring something in. With every inhale, as you lie here in your Shavasana, breathe in something that you want to fill those spaces that you just burned through. Maybe they're mental or emotional spaces. With every inhale, think of something you love about yourself. A word that makes you unique. Filling yourself with self-love and self-worth. Getting rid of anything else that no longer serves you and filling it, replacing it with something that does. Breathe into your bones. Breathe into your muscles, into your skin. Breathe into your hair. Breathe into your face. Breathe into your heart. I mention this quote quite often because it's something that I have needed in my life. So I'll repeat it to you while you lie here for these last couple minutes. Joseph Campbell wrote, there was a time in Nietzsche's life where the idea came to him of what he called the love of your fate. Whatever your fate is, whatever happens, you say, this is what I need. It may look like a wreck, but go at it as though it were an opportunity or a challenge. If you bring love to that moment, not discouragement, you'll find the strength is there. Any disaster that you can survive is an improvement in your character, your stature, and your life. What a privilege. This is when the spontaneity of your own nature will have a chance to flow. Then when looking back at your life, the moments that seem to be great failure followed by wreckage are the incidents that shape the life you have now. You may see this as true. Nothing can happen to you that isn't positive. Even though it looks and feels in the moment like a negative crisis, eventually it most certainly is not, depending on how we choose to react to that moment. Cleanse your mind, cleanse your brain, cleanse your soul. Breathe into those dark spaces that we've been closed off. Breathe into the uncomfortable in order to release that tension. That's where we become strong. That's where we become healthy. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes, breathing some life back into the stillness as you roll to your right side. And when you're ready, 
Slowly lift up to a seated position, keeping your eyes closed so your brain registers what you feel rather than what you see. This isn't about me. This is about you. So look within yourself. Feel what's going on. Checking out is easy. Walking away is easy. Checking in is where the work begins. Check in, notice how you feel and validate it. Beautiful practice. Thank you for tuning in for yourself. Namaste. And we'll see you next time.